Good morning, or depending on what you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told out of Voice the Radio, that today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that won one of those Mewtwo. Now, I did a video a few days ago now showing you that over in Japan, you can enter a limited remix bout tournament. Sealed tournament, think of it like a pre-release, although with much higher stakes. And if you win that pre-release, but only if you win the whole thing, you get yourself one of only 300 Hyper Rare Mewtwo in the world. These Rainbow Rares, there's 300 of them in the entire world. You've got to win a pre-release tournament to win one. So I thought, well, I follow a bunch of Japanese shops over on Twitter. So I thought it would be nice to show you what it takes, the kind of... Well, the kind of deck it takes to actually go ahead and win this tournament. So let's have a look, shall we? Now, a couple things off the bat. This person did get themselves a couple of GXs. In any kind of pre-release, it is always a good idea to get GXs. You will notice that what they did not do was just grab themselves... Well, they got Piplup and Blastoise. They didn't play that with 39 water energy. I don't think that is good enough in this kind of format. Now, the other thing is that these are going to be in our pre-release over here. So the other thing you are getting in this video is a nice little, nice little preview of the kind of stuff that's going to be good in pre-releases over here when Sun and Moon 12 Cosmic Eclipse comes out. So there is a Blastoise and Piplup, free water energy, you do 150. You attach free water energy from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. And every time you attach a water energy, you heal 50 from the Pokemon to whom you attached it. It's really good. GX attack does 150 plus paralysis, 250 in paralysis. If you've got 6 energy on, that's fine. But really here, it's there for the first attack. But I did tell you that when it comes to Blastoise and Piplup, you need a way to get the energy on there for the first attack, and that's where Kyogre comes in. Kyogre's got a really nice attack for one colorless energy, attach two water energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. That is incredibly good, because it's a way of getting energy onto your Blastoise and Piplup to get rolling. Remember, you've got four prize decks here. So if you can lose two or even three prizes and then stick a Blastoise and Piplup out, your opponent is going to have to take it down in order to win the game. The only gusting in the set is Great Catcher, which discard two cards from your hand and then gust an EX or a GX into the active. So that's only going to get a Lolan Persian, just don't leave it on the bench. Or Venusaur and Snivy. So unless your opponent's got a Venusaur and Snivy, just make sure you've got no EX or GX on the bench. And then all of a sudden, they can have one prize remaining, but be forced to take out a Blastoise and Piplup in order to win the game. That's kind of funny. Now, if you want to use Kyogre, you do have to discard the energy. We do have a great catcher here. There's also a copy of Acro Bike. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Discard one, put one in your hand. That can get the energy in the discard. And then we've got two copies of Roller Skater here, whereby you discard a card from your hand and draw two. But if you discard an energy, you draw four cards instead. So there are a few options here for getting that energy into the disc. Guard. Now, really, Blastoise and Piplup is your best option here. Make no mistake about that. In terms of other attackers, we really don't have very much. We have a Lolan Persian, but really, a Lolan Persian is here for the ability. The ability says prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to this Pokemon by your opponent's tag team Pokemon, Ultra Beasts and Pokemon with special energy attached. Now, there is both draw energy, when you attach it, you get to draw a card, and weak guard energy, which takes away your weakness in the set, and there's actually one copy of each of them in this deck. So for that reason, it is useful, as well as just stopping your opponent playing tag teams. Because if anyone is playing a tag team Pokemon of 39 energy, Alolan Persian's gonna be all like, what up, boy? And just going to be stopping them in their tracks. It's a competent attacker. 120 for free energy. Especially if your blocking is good. 
Uh, 120 to any of your opponent's Pokemon going through any effects is fine, but it is a competent attacker, nothing more. And you have a copy of Heracross here. Now, again, we're not talking about some huge powerhouse gonna just rush to victory and crush everyone kind of attacker, but... Free colorless energy, 50 damage, or 120 against a tag team. Against opposing Blastoise and Piplup, that's actually pretty good. It won't one-hit KO, but it's still going to do a whole bunch of damage. And the last attacker we've got here is actually Alolan Muck. Now, I've done videos about all these Pokemon. I'll link them all in the description. When I told you about Alolan Muck, I told you it wasn't particularly good, but could be good in a pre-release because of the first attack. One Darkness, one Colorless Energy, 20 damage, plus Burn, plus Confusion, plus Poison. Free Energy 110 is fine, but really we're going 20 damage plus Burn, Confusion, and Poison. Again, if anyone wants to play one Pokemon and 39 energy, or something like that, then leaving them Burned, Confused, and Poisoned is going to be a great way to try and take them out. Now, we do have a couple of support Pokemon here. We do have one copy of Sourcebuck. It's basically just a Lowland Sand Slash. I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. Once during your turn, you may draw a card. It does have a hit and run attack like a Lowland Sand Slash, but you'll notice here that you're not actually playing any grass energy, so it's kind of irrelevant. You're not going to be attacking with it. We've got two copies of Fione here. Now, this is here for the ability. Again, we're not playing any water energy. When you're playing a pre-release, you, you have to really choose which energy you're playing here. One water energy, 10 damage, doesn't make you want to play water energy. But once during your turn, you may make your opponent switch their active with one of their bench. Now, your opponent gets a choice here. But again, when I said earlier about leaving a tag team GX active when you've only got one prize remaining, well, Fione is a great, great out to that. And as it's a counter, you can stop your opponent doing that, but they're also going to have an out against you trying to do that. And then there's two copies here of Rotom. Rotom, again, is just a get-going kind of Pokemon. It's just there to set you up. One colorless energy, discard a card from your hand, draw two cards. So when I was talking about the discarding earlier, you can use Rotom. I didn't mention it earlier because now we're talking about using Rotom to discard the energy as an attack then using Kyogre to attach it as an attack, and then getting going with Blastoise and Piplup. It's far too awkward. You'd much rather just discard the energy with something like Roller Skater or Acrobike, but it is an option there. does have a second attack, but it is for Psychic Energy, so it's entirely irrelevant because we're not playing any Psychic Energy. The Pokemon line here is quite strong. We've got Kyogre and Rotom just to set yourself up and get going. We've got Alolan Muck and Heracross as backup attackers. And then we've got Sourcebuck for consistency and Fione to make your opponent switch. Clearly, the goal of this deck is Blastoise and Piplup, but we've got other options. Now, in terms of energy, it's largely water for Blastoise and Piplup. For Darkness Energy... Could be for Alolan Persian, but I think really here Alolan Muck is what you're using that for. One draw energy and one weak guard energy because they are good cards. Take away your weakness, draw a card. Yeah, I'll take that. Now in terms of trainers, do remember this is a sealed, a limited tournament. So you're not going to have the consistency you'd like. But we've got a Professor Oak setting. Let's you search your deck for three different types of basic Pokemon and bench them. That's going to help you get rolling here, ladies and gentlemen. Especially when you consider you've actually got four different types of basic Pokemon here. Water, Darkness, Grass, and Psychic. Yeah, that's going to be pretty gosh darn useful. One copy of Janine doesn't see a huge amount of play at the moment, and this is legal outside of Japan. But we got other options, not the case here. Look at the top four cards of your deck, put two in your hand, shuffle the rest into your deck. It's decent search. Two copies of Roller Skater, as mentioned, and then a copy of Judge. Not bad for disruption here. You give both players a new hand of four cards. But in a limited format like this, any draw is good. 
So this is going to be a draw card as much as a disruption card. Although having both Rotom and Sourcebuck is going to help you with that consistency. And then in terms of the item cards here, we've got a couple of energy retrieval to get your energy back. Kind of useful. I mean, often it's just making sure that you've got the right energy in hand, to be honest with you. One acro bike, a little bit of consistency, might discard an energy. One switch, because you want to make sure you've got the right Pokemon in the active, especially with Fiona being a common and going to be popping up in a lot of decks. One great catcher, really good for if your opponent does have a GX, dragging it into the active. One copy of Energy Switch lets you move an energy from one of your Pokemon to another. It's really nice if you have to put an energy in the wrong place in the early game to switch it over, especially given we have very little Pokemon search. And we do have very little. We got Professor Oak setting and then one copy of Pokemon Communication lets you swap a Pokemon in your hand you don't want for a Pokemon in your deck you do want. I like this deck. It's a really good example of how to make a limited deck. Remember, these tournaments were 32 or 64 people, but you were competing for a card which is going to be worth hundreds of dollars, possibly even more. If you get this Mewtwo graded, it is going to become an extremely valuable card. That makes this an extremely competitive tournament. Your average pre-release, this is not, ladies and gentlemen. This is the kind of thing it takes. And you see, yes, we've got the big tag team GX and it's sitting there smashing. But do you really think he's the only one who got a tag team GX in his deck? He's got things like the Alolan Muck. There to slow his opponent down. The Saws Buck for a little bit of consistency. The Rotom and the Kyogre as early game attackers. Or to set yourself up. Double Fione. These are the kind of decisions that make the difference between winning and losing. So you wanted to know what it would take to get one of those Hyper Rare Mewtwo? This, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it would take. But now we've reached that point in the game where I'd very much like to know what you think about this deck. Do you think this is a good pre-release deck or do you think the people could have done better? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.